Good afternoon. How's everybody doing on this fine Saturday here in Central Florida? July 23rd, 2022. I don't know if you, anybody recalls, but I mentioned in a past video I'm going to be doing a second Serpent Sting guitar. Um, I had this blank um, that I cut probably about six months ago that I never got around to. And it was a rough cut. And I just had the uh, scroll saw out. I didn't film it. But I just, re you know, connected these three pieces together and refined the shape. So, and what the plan on this one is, I got a really cool neck that I found aftermarket that's reminiscent of the first Serpent Sting that I came up with the original style neck. And I'll show you the neck when I, when I pull it out. But it's pretty cool. Um, so what the plan for this one is, is... This is a guitar that's a homage or a clone or a copy of sorts of James Hetfield's ESP Snake Bite guitar. So I call it the Serpent Sting. Uh, if you follow my channel for a while or if you look down in the feed, you'll see the original Serpent Sting. It had an off-white colored body with a maple neck and the top, uh, the maple neck and fretboard. And the headstock was uh, off-white. It was interesting. It looked like a serpent, like a, like a bit on the headstock. This is going to be another one, uh, except for this one's going to be a little bit more dramatic. On these particular models, James Hetfield had the ESP uh, lawsuit from Gibson. So he had to change it up a little bit, but he still wanted to have the Explorer shape. So this is the second cutout of this guitar. And you got to see, this is going to be really cool. Now you see how... I don't know if you noticed on my first Serpent Sting, the second, this uh, layer was uh, recessed. So it looked really killer. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but on the philosophy of this one, the reset is recess is gonna be for more predominant. Instead of being a gradual recess, I'm gonna cut this piece uh, probably like a quarter inch. And there's gonna be a quarter inch void like that. I'll show you the neck and it's gonna match the neck on the headstock. So I'll have to show you that real quick, and it's going to be really cool. I haven't really decided on the paint yet. There's so many ways I can go with this. These three pieces are fairly heavy. They probably weigh about, I don't know, seven, eight pounds as they stand. Ah, oh, maybe not that heavy. Probably about six, seven pounds as it stands. I did see some diamond plate material at our local uh, home improvement center. And I was thinking about coloring the whole body black, with the exception of... You'll see when I say it's in tears. I'm gonna cut this top piece and this section's gonna, gonna be gone, but it's gonna be lower. I'll show you the headstock and I'll show you what I mean. All right, hold on, so let me get the headstock out and I'll show you what I mean. All right, I got the neck out. Okay, so this is the headstock that I found online. And this is similar to the original shape that I had for the first uh, snake bite or serpent sting guitar that I had made. It's very similar to this. So I saw this online and I'm like, that would look really cool on a serpent sting guitar. So basically, you see how that void is predominant? I like that. And I'm going to imitate that with the body. I'm going to cut this on the top layer. This is three pieces. Got the half inch or three quarter inch on the bottom and then the two half inch layers on top. There's going to be a Strat style floating tremble, two point tremble right there. A single EMG pickup and then a single volume knob and probably a tone. And I might add a kill switch just for kicks on this one. But as you can see, I'm going to cut that, like I said, to cut out the layer so it's going to go down that half inch. So it's going to be reminiscent of that on the neck, if you could see that. So it's going to be very cool. And I haven't decided the paint. Like I said, I could do the diamond plate to where color the whole body black. Um, and then do the diamond plate just on the top tier and then the bottom tier. But that would make the guitar very heavy. A guitar would be excess of 12, 13 pounds. So that might not be an option. So it might be some sort of uh, anodized color. I've looked at anodized purple. That might actually be pretty neat. I've never seen an explorer shaped guitar in a purple, kind of an 80s throwback kind of thing. And then I would do definitely the, the headstock from the headstock purple too as well. But this is what we're working with. So uh, this is gonna be really cool. Yeah, I think that anodized purple is pretty neat. There's an anodized yellow. Uh, leave in the comments what you think uh, color it could be. I was even thinking about doing rhinestones and then seeing the, when the color 
with the uh, the diamond plate or I could even do a mirror finish but see the mirror finish would require screws and so will the diamond plate screws to attach well the diamond plate not per se because you could always glue the diamond plate but the mirror for sure you'd need screws because if you put any kind of adhesive under the mirror it could mess with the mirror effect and it would just be a big old mess um, with the diamond plate material I wouldn't use a, a pickup ring so the pickup would mount it to the diamond plate material which would be really cool so this piece I would make out of diamond plate it would go over the top of a black guitar but with the maple neck and the black it kind of I don't know it doesn't kind of balance out I might have to do it on a different one I might do that on a ninja warrior guitar a diamond plate version of that uh, but that would be really cool but yeah anything anything anodized some sort of color that would go good with maple I like the purple idea because it's kind of like a metallic purple it's like a chrome with a purple clear coat tint over the purple like you'll see when I when I get around to doing the serpent sting uh, or the Ninja Warrior 2 guitar that's gonna be anodized blue and that's gonna have the same concept where you paint it black first you paint it chrome then you paint the clear coat that has the tinting in it so we're gonna see what I'm gonna do on this one. We'll see what's gonna happen. Um, I'm gonna try to set the neck pocket and get everything lined up. Then I'm gonna cut out that piece and we'll see you on the next step. All right, so this is gonna be the Serpent Sting number two guitar build. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, roughly marked out where I think the neck pocket's gonna go. And on the original, there's a cutaway here for easy access to the higher frets. So let me go ahead and get an adjustment on this excuse me and then cut that out and then we'll disassemble and then cut that other piece all right we'll see in a sec all right corrected for the neck pocket looks pretty good i got the right angle going this way not these lines these lines are i've shifted it a little bit higher up just a little bit though all right so let me get the circular sander out and let me clean up these lines a bit and get it all perfect there right, we'll see in a bit all right cleaned up the lines pretty good it's looking awesome looking pretty good all right so next step is to cut out the neck pocket so let me retrace it and make sure it's good separate the three layers just going to cut the neck pocket out of the top two all right we'll see you in a second all right got the neck pocket cut out <laughs> and where the uh the bridge is going to go i got my intonation line right there and i'll have a volume i might put a tone I might put a volume and then a kill switch. I might do a kill switch instead because I, I never use tone really. So that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, and I'm gonna cut away this section here. All right, so it looks pretty good. I'm gonna have to make another blank, of course, out of the material over there. But let me go ahead and make the blank and get a good height going on. And then we'll cut out that top part on the, the first layer. Alright, let's see in a sec. That looks pretty cool though, yeah. See what I mean with the uh, the cutaway? And I'll do like that angle. I try to match that there. So that'll look pretty bad to the bone. Alright, we'll see a little bit. Alright, got the top layer cut out. Now you can kind of see what I'm going for. And I'll, I'll feather this like it is on the neck. I'll round that seam so it'll blend. Just on the corner though, just around. But yeah, you see what I'm going for? That's gonna match the headstock perfectly. So I think an anodized color would look really awesome. Maybe that purple. Yeah, probably leaning towards the anodized purple, but yeah, and I recut the neck pocket a little bit better. And then this is gonna be, uh, the material's gonna be taken off, so the comfort cut to eat to access the, the higher frets. So, and then the, uh, two-point strat style tremble will go right there with the whammy bar and then the single volume knob and maybe a kill switch input jack will probably be somewhere in this area strap button will probably be there and then maybe up top here or I'll figure that out when I come to it but yeah all right so I guess the next step is going to be uh, put a round edge on all the exposed surfaces and on the back cut out the uh, the neck pocket I'm gonna have to shave off one layer of the plywood on one of these blanks uh, I think the blank that was on the bottom probably the best yeah that one right there I'll shave off a layer there's three layers to this plywood section piece half inch I'll shave off that top layer and then some like half of the middle layer and that'll put my neck in the proper position as far as angle 
and I'll adjust all that when I get to it. But yeah, Whew, getting kind of tired. But I uh, guess the next step is going to be to put the Dremel tool and round all the edges. And then, like I said, cut out this piece, and that should do it for the day. So, all right, we'll see you next time. Good afternoon, everybody. It's about noontime on August 28th, 2022. And it is a fine day here in Central Florida. It's time to continue work on the Serpent Sting number two electric guitar build. I got my parts, I got my body. Got to get re uh, acclimated with what's going on. I haven't touched this build in a few days because of the weather and been working on this, that, the other thing. Okay, so. Let me get organized here. Got some bug spray on. I know I did cut out my neck pocket. Um, and this to recap real quick, this uh, guitar is gonna have the uh, Strat style two point bridge. It's gonna have a single humbucker, hot humbucker, probably be the chrome pickup. Uh, I'll probably do the coil split function. Um, one volume with a coil split. I input jack. Um, Deciding on the paint, I might go with a the glitter blue paint because I do have that on hand, or I might go with the anodized red paint because I did the anodized blue on the Ninja Warrior number no. two guitar, and I might go anodized blue or anodized red on this one. Um, this one's gonna have a cutaway here, like on the first Serpent Sting. Um, so I guess the first thing is gonna be to I've got my neck tendon. And I'm going to figure out that depth and then attach the neck. So let me get everything organized and we'll be right back. All right, just a quick update. I actually cut out my template and my little extra piece for my three layers. And I think this will give me plenty of room with my neck. I'll show you. I'll be right back and get the neck installed. All right, got the neck in the pocket. Looking pretty good. As you can see, you can see I wanted it a little bit lower. Because this way I'll actually countersink the bridge. I want to countersink this one a little bit. Have the bridge go into the body. Seems how it's a little bit girthy on the, the body side on this side. So yeah. So let me uh, go ahead and square all this up. And then check this uh, pocket. And then we'll get a back plate. And then we'll actually screw in the neck. And we'll see how it looks from there. Right, we'll see in a bit. Alright, got my insert perfect. And I shave the sides and everything, so I'm going to go ahead and get some CA glue, and I'm going to glue the uh, the piece into where it needs to be. And then we'll see after I do that step. See you in a bit. Alright, got everything ready. I got my neck plate, and it's time to screw in the neck to the body. So let's screw this in there, and then we'll get really good measurements on where to put the bridge. Alright, we'll see you in a little bit. Uh, Alright, got the bridge installed, and it is looking killer. I love that. You can see that's why I chose this neck because see how it's got that cutaway there and the cutaway here so it's very cool and as you can see it cuts the, uh, the awesome. yeah so it looks pretty good so far no problems Went pretty uneventful pretty smooth neck plate looks centered it looks exactly where it needs to be all right so what now I'm gonna draw some measurements and get my bridge where it needs to go and we will see in a little bit looks pretty cool and me again i just wanted to show you how the guitar theoretically is going to sit of course i don't have any strings or anything on it of course but i just wanted to show you how it lines up and how it fits in the lap yeah it's really killer yeah like the original serpent sting and it's gonna be pretty sweet a uh, hard angle but anyway all right and we will see you in a little bit all right this is the trim that i'm gonna go with again this time the two point trim so let me take this out of the package dismantle it and then line it up and then we'll figure out where to drill the uh the post holes for the bridge then we'll get all that going and uh figure out where the through cuts gonna be and everything like that, but I, I'll see this up. All right, got my bridge post marked out where they should be, and now I'm gonna get my drill bit, and I'm going to go the correct depth. Fingers crossed. I did all my 
did my string test and this is always the tricky part so you want to make sure that you always get it where you need to have it so I'll see you in a sec okay have my drill bit proper drill bit and marked for the proper depth and here we go I've got my holes pre-tapped that way the bit doesn't wander and go anywhere I don't want it to okay here we go I'm gonna drill these out and hope that hopefully it goes well we'll see you in a sec uh, I got the post holes dug uh, drilled and the bridge is exactly where it needs to be and it's about the right height too it's perfect and I checked the uh, the lines with the uh, the neck and it looks pretty good I don't think I'll even have to countersink I'm not sure I was thinking I was going to countersink the bridge a little bit into the body, but I think this might be fine. So, all right, so let me figure out where the, uh, you have to drill through the body for the, uh, the block. All right, we'll see a little bit. Okay, I've got my space cut out to where I plan the, uh, the block to actually fit through the body. So let me clean up my mess here, get out the scroll saw, and then cut through all the layers and cut through to get the pocket for the uh, for the block on the bridge. All right, we'll see in a little bit. I got my pilot holes drilled out. I got my scroll saw lined up. Okay, so let me cut it out. Fingers crossed everything goes well, and we will see in a little bit. All right, successfully cut open the key for the, uh, for the block on the bridge. All right, let me put the bridge back together and get it all back together and see if everything lines up perfectly. All right, we'll see in a second. Yeah, looking good. I got the springs and the claw out and I'm marking out where I'm going to create the cavity, the spring cavity for the bridge. And I figured about right there where my measurements are. All right, let me mark this out and we'll get out, figure out what we're going to do as far as uh, how we're going to countersink this. Probably get out the uh, Dremel tool as always and then countersink it. All right, we'll see in a little bit. All right, got the, uh, where I'm going to Dremel it out and now I'm going to countersink it. I got the Dremel tool out and we're going to go down to where I got the marks on the inside, probably about that deep or so, depending, and we will see you in a little bit. All right, got the cut out for the bridge spring cavity. It looks pretty good. All right, let me get the bridge and everything in there and take a look at the springs and see how we are. All right, let's see a little bit. All right, dry run's looking pretty good. Got the bridge installed. I'll put the bridge springs. Yeah, it looks pretty straight as far as the uh, the cavity there. That should be good. And I've only got three springs on there. No strings, of course. So, and it's a pretty good. And I don't have the posts exactly set perfect because uh, I don't have them locked in yet. I'll get them locked in. But yeah, I just wanted to show you. See, just a. And that looks good. And I think that's gonna be enough. Once uh, the posts are in the proper space, I think that's going to be enough uh, distance between the body and the uh, the bridge there. So I think that'll be perfect as long as the strings line up and everything like that. Let me put on the neck temporarily and let's see how everything looks. And um, I don't know, maybe I'll put a, a couple uh, tuning pegs in there. The uh, the the E tuning pegs and then put a couple mock-up strings. I think I got a, pair, a set of nines that I could use. And let's see how this looks. All right, let's see in a second. All right, got the neck back out. I'm gonna install a couple tuning keys on the neck. And uh, I found me a set of tens, actually. Uh, this goes back a ways. Is anybody uh, watching these videos remember musicyo.com where you could buy a bunch of Kramer guitars? <laughs> I bought a bunch of springs, uh, strings way, way back then from Music Yo. Fun fact, uh, yeah, they, they were making all these cool Kramer guitars. I bought a bunch of acrylics, all kinds of stuff, and then Gibson bought them out and then shut them down. So, love Gibson. Don't you just love Gibson. All right, we'll see in a bit. All right, installed a couple tuning keys, both these strings, just temporarily. All right, let me so put the neck on the body and put a couple strings on there and see what we got. All right, we'll see in a couple minutes. All right, got the string, couple strings put on there, and it's lined up perfectly. Looks pretty good. And then we got a little bit of room for adjustment from the side there. Same thing on the other side. So that looks pretty good. And the height looks good. So we're all good that way as far as the pitch and everything like that. Oops, slipped off the nut there. But uh, yeah. And I erred more towards the, to being on that side than like on the Eddie Van Halen where it was almost to the end of the limit there as far as intonation, so we're not gonna have that problem on this guitar at all, so. 
All right, so next step is going to be to figure, to lock in the bridge, the posts, and then figure out where I'm gonna put the, uh, the pickup, uh, and then cut the pickup cavity, and start working the, uh, the wiring. So it's getting kind of late, I'm getting a little bit tired, so we did accomplish quite a bit today, so. All right, and we will see you in a little. Got a dummy pickup there. I don't know if this is probably not going to be the pickup I'm going to use, but this pickup I'm using to determine where I'm going to space the pickup. And I think that looks pretty good. And with the, uh, I'm going to give it plenty of room. So let me uh, dismantle the guitar again. And then we'll get ready to cut out for the, uh, the pickup there. All right, and we'll see you in a little bit. Uh, got everything that's dismantled. Now I'm going to take apart the uh, three layers and we're gonna cut through only two of the layers for the uh, the pickup, uh, you know, the hole for the pickup. So, all right, and we'll see you in a little bit. I have the uh, drawn out where I'm gonna cut. I got the scroll saw queued up. I temporarily joined the top and the middle layer together and the bottom layer is over there. So, all right, so we're gonna cut, uh, first we're gonna get the uh, drill and we're gonna drill out two pilot holes and we're gonna cut out for the pickup cavity. All right, we'll see in a little bit. All right, we're perfect cut out for the uh, pickup. Looks pretty good. All right, so what I'm gonna do now on these layers, flip it over and start planning out where the wiring's gonna go. I'm just gonna have one pedometer, just one volume knob on this particular guitar because that's just how I roll. So I'll probably put the volume knob somewhere in this vicinity right chair or something like that kind of compared to the first uh, serpent sting guitar and then we'll figure out the wiring the uh, the input jacks probably gonna go like right around here somewhere so we'll go ahead and trace out where all the wiring pretty straightforward wiring it's gonna be a hot passive pickup um, I may do coil tap I may not uh, yeah I'll probably do coil tap I'll probably get a uh, not coil tapping, but actually coil splitting. There's a difference. I was going to explain that. Um, coil tapping is where they wind it halfway and then they lead, get a lead with a wire and then they fully wind it and then it gives you two separate sounds. That's coil tapping. Uh, coil splitting is what I'm doing on this guitar and the first act guitar is where I'm going to have it so a push pull pot. Um, in the down position, it's going to be the full humbucker. In the up position, it's just going to be the top coil because usually there's two coils, two single coils that are wound together, and it gives you, you know, the noise canceling humbucker. But uh, when the toggle is pulled out on the push pull, it'll just be the top uh, single coil um, active and the bottom one will be grounded out so it won't actually be heard so it'll give it a couple different voicings as far as that um, tone I don't think I'll go with a tone on this one I think I went with a tone on the uh, serpent sting number one you know what I might go with a tone Nah. well I guess it all depends Nah. I'll just go with the volume just go straight forward because the color the color is going to be either two two things on this guitar it is going to be the glitter blue which I already have and all everything I need for glitter blue or going to have the anodized red version um, and I think that'd be cool because of the the contour in the body but uh, we'll see it's determined yet so all right so we'll see you next step okay so I decided uh, actually I'm undecided I'm deciding now I was going to go with a volume and a tone knob and the volume being the push-pull for the single coil. But see, it'd be really cool just to have just the volume only, no tone, be a straightforward, you know, metal, metal guitar. Hmm, still deciding. Because the tone would give tonal options um, to anybody that wants to do leads or whatever, whatnot. But since how we're just going with a single pickup, um, no, I think it just I think it's straightforward, just one volume push pull, bada boom, bada bing, and it would give more real estate for the. I don't know. Uh, I wish I can hear any kind of input from you guys out there watching, but uh, hmm. It, it, one way or the other, I mean, it's it's either or. I mean, it would be cool, fine either way. Um, I mean, these are basically the, if I decide to go with both, um, 
we figure it out and we'll see you in a sec and the verdict is volume and a tone that way we can have a tonal options because you got the push pull and you can have tone so that's fine maybe i can do something interesting with the tone capacitor so all right so let me uh get the drill bit out and drill these all the way through and then we'll figure out the wiring and like i said the input jack's going to be right about there so it's going to be a square input jack all right we'll see in a little bit drill that for the pedometer the volume and the tone like i said pedometer is going to be push pull uh chrome pickup i do believe Maybe we might not go with chrome. Yeah, we should. Go with chrome pickup, why not? Chrome pickup, chrome pickup ring. And let's make it more, look more elegant. And we'll decide on either the glitter blue or the anodized red. Either or. Alright, so now we're going to flip the body over and then figure out the wiring. Get that drawn out. Then get the Dremel tool and then wire that out. And, uh, you know, see how far we get. Alright, we'll see in a little bit. Okay, first before we actually get to the uh, wiring part of it, I'm just going to go ahead and glue the top piece to the center piece. Um, I got my glue out, so let me glue those two pieces together and we'll see in a sec. Successful glue phase. The top piece is successfully glued into the middle piece there, so it looks pretty good. Alright, we're going to flip it over. I'm going to clean my MS and we're going to figure out the wiring. Alright, we'll be right back. Figured out the wiring. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, pedometer uh, tone to the input jack, and then from the pickup, and then the ground will come from the other side, probably through the back there. And uh, so, all right. So let me get the Dremel tool and let me Dremel this stuff out, and we'll see in a sec. All right. Quick update. I uh, did the wiring compartments, and it looks pretty good. And I made the pedometer hole just a little bit fatter, just in case the uh, the push pole pot's a little fatter. And then on the side, I did that. And then I put a hole for the access panel plate. And so we're going to get out the spool saw again, and we're going to cut this opening in the back piece. And then I did uh, also drill through a hole for the ground for the claw. So, all right, successful opening for the pedometer cavity. Plenty of room for the pedometer to fit in there when I'm wiring it. Um, the uh, push pull hmm, might be a little longer and it might be a little fatter and bigger, so it might not even fit. Well, it probably will fit, but maybe I'll put it a little bit wider just over here, just in case for that purpose. But then I'll bore a little bit on the sides to make it uh, courtesy so I can get in there easily. All right, all right, we'll see in a little bit. All right, got all the wiring complete. Everything looks good to go. I think we're almost ready for the glue phase. We can glue these two, uh, the, the two top pieces together with the bottom piece and have one solid body. I think we're good to go. Everything has been the wiring, the volume, the tone, uh, everything seems pretty good. So let's glue these two pieces together and we'll be right back. Glue fades complete. We are one solid piece of wood. <laughs> it looks good. Whew, got a lot done today. Oh, I got a lot further than I thought I would. And then tomorrow we're going to make an access panel plate and then countersink it. Uh, we might even countersink the uh, spring plate for the bridge. We'll see if we have enough room for that or not. Uh, but I opted to leave the temporary screws inside the guitar this time and I'll cover it up with Bondo so it won't be seen. So it'll be nice and firm. I, I have faith in the glue, but uh, on this one with the, uh, the cutaway, I just decided. So, all right. Hope everybody's having a good night. And then I'll sand all this glue uh, residue. But, uh, this will conclude today's uh, work on the uh, Serpent Sting number no. two electric guitar for today, and it looks awesome. Can't wait to figure out what to paint, and then I'll get a rasp, and I'm going to cut this wood out here. That way, I have easy access to the higher frets. So, all right, and we will see you tomorrow. Continue work. All right, have a good night. Good morning everybody, it is August 29th, 2022, it is Monday, time to continue work on the Serpent Sting number 2 guitar build. Alright, so what we're going to accomplish now, uh, we're going to make a back plate cover 
for the pedometers and then a back plate cover for the uh, springs for the bridge. And I decided I'm going to use the thin metal, like a big example of this right here. And then we're going to countersink it, so that's going to look pretty cool. So I got to figure out some paper, got some scissors, got a pencil, so I'll figure out the shape. And then it'll look like it's countersink and it'll look pretty cool. So we'll do that and it'll all match all the chrome, everything else. I was going to order some mirror material, but I think it'd be too thick. Um, I think the, the thinness of the metal is actually perfect. So let me get some shapes going and we'll see you in a sec. All right, came up with some shapes that I really dig that'll cover pretty good. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these shapes and I'm going to put them on the mirror ma the material, the metal material. And then we're going to trace them out and then we're going to get them on the scroll saw and cut them out. And we'll see in a little bit. Have the two shapes traced out on the metal material, cut it out. All right, scroll saw queued out. Let me cut out these two pieces and we'll be right back. Successful cut out of the two shapes and I got them lined up where exactly where I want them on the body of the guitar. So what now I'll do, what I'll do now, what now I'll do, how do I speak? What I'll do now, I'll get my uh, Zacto blade out with a fresh blade. I got my old blade right there and I got some new blades. Uh, it's always crucial, Zacto blades, so I recommend you buy a pack of Zacto blades. I'm going to Draw it out with pencil first, and I'm going to trace it out, score it, and then we're going to countersink it just enough so it looks really good with the countersink of the two metal pieces. The two metal pieces aren't that thick, so it doesn't have to go that deep. And then once that's completed, then I think I'll, well, we'll see. I will do that step first, and we'll be right back. All right, the countersink looks perfect. So, that's pretty awesome. So, as you can see, and it's got plenty of room for the spring and the claw, so we're good to go. Alright, so that's completed. Um, I think I might actually, let me, while I got these out, I'm going to tap the screws. That way the screws will already be pre-drilled. Let me do all that real quick and I'll be right back. Alright, looking good. I got them installed. Uh, counter uh, Pre-drilled through the holes, I countersunk the screws in the metal and then it looks good and of course this is that film when i peel this off it's going to be brilliant metal shiny shiny so all right so we'll go to the next step i'll be right back let me uh, take this all apart again and store it properly and then i think what we're going to do is we're going to get the bridge posts uh dialed in perfectly um but we'll see in a sec one sec all right another quick update i just got the uh cutaway for the access to the higher fret just dialed in and it looks awesome wow that is so cool spent some time doing it and uh it looks pretty cool too and the overall shape it i think it adds to the overall aesthetic of it too because uh this way your hands can get to the your fingers can get to the highest frets and i think it's a two, 22 fret neck so i mean it's you know it's not like a 24 fret neck but yeah it looks pretty good all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the uh, the neck pocket and the bridge uh, posts dialed in. I'm gonna put a little filler in there and get them perfectly set, um, and then fill any body filler around the neck and make it look pretty pretty. And then we can start adding body filler to the sides and start the ugly phase because I completed like I showed you just a little while ago. Completed the two back covers. Um, and that looks awesome. So, yeah, I can't wait to fill this all in and it's all one uh, solid color. Because this is where I uh, traced the on the other side of the wood. The, <laughs> then I wanted to, this is like an actually a different piece from another guitar. And then I added the two top pieces. But, uh, yeah, to make this guitar. And I can't wait to fill all this in and make it perfect. So, all right. So let me get the neck out. Let me get the neck uh, back assembled. And then, uh. Actually, I'll get the let me uh, do all the tuning keys on uh, the neck, and we'll do a full string test while we're doing the uh, when we we getting everything dialed in. All right, we'll see in a little bit. Okay, I got the uh, bridge dialed in perfectly. It's on the intonation lines. I set the post really well, so now I set them with uh, filler. So now you yeah, um, we've got reverse tape on the inside, so you can pull them right out. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and when I go to assemble the guitar, so you can pull them out, 
fairly easy. They're really tight in there, but not tight enough. When I go pull them out, I'll probably put a little bit of wood glue in there. That way it'll just keep them where they are. I mean, they're not gonna move. They're locked in and set, and everything is good with the bridge. So, hmm, I don't really think I need to do a complete string test, but uh, I probably will after I do. Let's go to the ugly phase part one, and let's do start doing some body filler. So let me clean up my mess. Uh, we'll do the body filler. Uh, we'll sand that, get that all dialed in, and then we'll put the neck on and check everything and check all the different, you know, all my measurements, all the lines, and everything like that. So, all right, so let me clean up the mess and we'll grab it. All right, we are in full ugly phase part one. I got the sides and the top coated and the first layers of body filler and it is looking good. Well, it's looking very ugly, but this is going to develop uh, into something very nice. Once I let this cure for a little while, I'll sand it and I still gotta do the back yet. The back's gotta get the uh, ugly face part one, but yeah. All right, this is how we look right now. And it's for sure ugly. That is ugly. But, as you know, and if you've seen, it's going to be a phoenix rising from the ashes when it's complete. Alright, we'll let this cure for a little bit, and then we'll put some on the back. And we'll see you in a little bit. Hey, how's everybody doing? Alright, this is the conclusion of the ugly face. Number one has been completed. And it is looking awesome. Yeah. I just wanted to show you what it looks like before we start the second half of the ugly phase. Ugly phase part two. Where I go with a wood grain filler. But yeah, it looks pretty good. Ooh, I am tired of being at it all day. And get to this point. It looks awesome. Alright. Hope everybody's having a good night, and we will see you tomorrow, and we'll pick up then. Probably might do a little more sanding, we'll see. I'll take a look. I'm really tired to make any decisions right now. Oh, that took a lot to get it to that point, but it is looking awesome. Alright. And we will see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Good morning, how's everybody doing this fine Tuesday morning? It is August 30th, 2022, and it's time to continue work on the Serpent Sting number two electric guitar. Just a recap of yesterday's work. We finished the ugly phase part one, and I'll probably still put a little bit more wood filler here and there, but it, the uh, body's looking pretty good. It's a very sunny, beautiful day outside, but I figured I'd be inside with nice, cool air conditioner it's still a little bit warm because the summer but today what I want to do is uh I want to do a full-on string test so I've got some uh, some spare strings 10 gauge 10 to 46 so I'm going to attach the neck um, yesterday I put on the tuning keys installed so I'll attach the neck attach the bridge put the strings on there tune it up real good I've got my audible tuner and just see where I am as far as all the lines and the insonation and make sure everything is perfect before I continue on with the uh, the body filler phase and everything like that. And that way I can fine tune and add any filler in anywhere else where I need to prior to assembly. And then I'll probably install the strap buttons, do that now. Um, and then we'll go to the ugly phase part two and then start working the finish. So let me get the neck out. And let me start that process and then we'll see how we are. And like I said, I'm inside the guitar room slash bedroom and everything is nice. Got the AC running. I don't know how hot it is outside, but it just feels good to every now and then to do this because I could do this in here. And uh, so then I can do some minor work in here as far as the drill and everything when I install the strap buttons. As far as strap buttons go, I think I'm going to put the strap button right there and then in the top of the back of the neck plate like I had on the first uh, serpent stinger turn. But alright, so let me get, get going on this and we'll see you in a little bit. Got me some coffee and we are ready to go. Alright, hope everyone's having a great morning and we will see you next up. Alright, got the bridge installed, everything looking good. Everything is looking pretty awesome. 
so all right. And uh, the other day I installed all the tuning keys on the neck. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to join the neck to the body and we'll be right back and I will put some strings on it. And then um, just for now, I've got some generic string trees and I'm just gonna install them real quick. And I'll probably upgrade to my favorite string trees, which are those ones. So, all right, we'll see in a little bit. All right, the bridge has been, or the neck has been attached to the body of the guitar and it looks pretty good. So I'll just show it to you real quick. Yeah, I love that shape. The shape is looking awesome. And if you can see in the mirror, oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. Alright, so let me put some strings on here. Make sure all my measurements and all my lines are correct. And let's see in a bit. Okay, see in a bit. Okay, got some mock-up strings installed and it's looking pretty good. All my measurements look dead on as far as the strings in the center. Alright, let me uh, get these strings to tension and get a somewhat of a intonation going and let's see how it sounds and see how everything goes. All right, we'll see in a little bit. Temporary installed some string trees. This is probably not the string trees I'll be using. I'll probably upgrade them like I had mentioned earlier, but I just have them on there just for the test. All right, so let me get the strings uh, up to tension and the springs up to tension and all that intonated and everything will be right back. All right, how's everybody doing? Just wanted to show you how it sounds. Okay. All right, let me give you a quick sound demonstration of how it sounds. See if I can angle the, uh, yeah, there we go. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. This neck's going to need some work because it's got a, a little bad fret there, but that can be easily taken care of when I do all the neck work on it. But I just wanted to show you how it Brand new strings so they're stretching, but and you can reach highest frets. So, all right, we're good. Um, intonation is a hair. Let me show you. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. The intonation is a hair uh, that way, like I thought. I uh, maybe overcompensated, but the way I can correct that is um, you adjust the neck just a little bit. I think there's a little bit of room I can move shift the neck actually further this way in the pocket so luckily the everything is perfect as far as the pitch goes but I think it's just a little too far um, separated from the bridge it's just a little far to the right just a little bit because you can see I'm tapped out on my intonation on my two E strings but all the rest of the strings are you know you can intonate a little bit further but these two particular they hit the posts if they go any further that way so and when you tune it E open and then when you hit the 12th fret it's flat so you would have to bring the saddle that way and there's not much room so in order to compensate for that I could uh, readjust the posts which wouldn't be that big a problem because um, I've already did that to posts already so and then just move the post hair that way but see the pickup is already a certain space so have the distance to pick it but i'll figure it out but all right so let me uh get things going and i'll be right back all right repositioned the uh posts and looking pretty good i moved them probably about a centimeter and probably less than that forward i uh took the dremel and i reset them then i got some body filler and some wood and i reset them that way because uh, the way the bridge was standing now, I was way at the front of the intonation line, quite the opposite of the Edward Van Halen, where it was always all the way in the back, where it was close to the edge of the intonation. I want to put it right dead center, and hopefully this correction will do that. It's always that way, you know, I'm trying to perfect this process. So, all right, let me uh, let this harden and get the bridge back together, and then put some strings back on there, and then see if I was successful. Alright, we'll see you in a little bit. Alright, a quick update. We are dialed in. Uh, I successfully uh, adjusted the posts for the bridge, so we are intonated and we are good. We are well within the uh, 
the limits of the intonation zone, so it's going to be pretty cool. And if it settles, I mean, there are a few things that I can still do if it ever has any issues. But yeah, alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually install the strap buttons. So I'm going to figure the exact center, and I'm going to put it in the center in the back plate. And I'm just going to use some generic strap buttons because I'm going to order my locking shaler strap buttons that I always love to use. But let me uh, get that going and we will be right back. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. <laughs> I love the shape. All right, we'll see you in a sec. Hey, another quick update. Got the strap buttons installed and I just wanted to show you where the guitar hangs. Perfectly. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. So it hangs in there. Let's see if I can set this here for a second just to show you how it hangs. Yeah, see? Perfect. So, no neck dive at all. Be able to access all the good frets. So, we're good to go. All right, I'll see you in one sec. It's time to dismantle everything and clean up my mess and then start with the ugly face, start applying the wood filler. All right, we'll see you in one sec. Another quick update. Just wanted to show you I dialed in the neck pocket as well. So there's a little bit of a, you know, fine hair gap there. And I fixed that and I'll sand that and make that smooth. And when I put all the body filler on there, it'll be seamless. So it's perfect. Yeah, see the strap button. So, all right. We are successfully, we are greenlit for Ugly Phase Part 2. Now it's time to start working on the finish, so it's, it's going to be awesome. And I think I'm going to go with Anodized Red, because the Anodized Blue was such an awesome thing. And I think with the Chrome and this right here, it would almost give it a car-like. And with the, uh, you know, the uh, contour on the headstock give it like a car like vibe in a way you know kind of mean this is kind of a car you know what i mean so at least that's what i think so it's going to be cool with the chrome pickup and the chrome pickup ring push bolt pot for the volume chrome hardware tone everything like that the uh the metal mirror uh back plate covers and everything so it's going to be awesome all right so <laughs> i make i made kind of made kind of a mess here around the inside so let me clean everything up and then we'll get ready and start laying on some uh, layers of the uh, wood grain filler. And I, you know, it's uh, the 30th day. I, I elected to uh, give the first act bangle of electric guitar another day or so just to cure because I did put the 2K clear coat, two coat, two, two cans, and then having all that paint on the neck i want to make sure that it's completely cured and hard before i start messing with it because you know the neck is just kind of crucial and i'll probably put a really fine sandpaper sand on the neck to make it perfectly smooth and play awesome but anyway that's another story but yeah all right so it's looking pretty good this is pretty sweet i love the serpent sting shape i mean of course it's like the james hetfield uh snake bite guitar like i've got the little mini one on the wall there but yeah it's got the same explorer-esque shape with the uh added things but all right and we'll see y'all when i get everything cleaned up and start applying the wood grain filler heights it is time for the ugly phase part two we have made it everything looks good got the neck pocket dialed in as far as the body filler and anything extra and as usual, we'll start on the sides and on the back. So, I'll mix me up a batch. If you watch my videos, you know I like to use the plastic wood wood filler all purpose. And I use the full strength and I cut it with water. And then I use my fan brush and then I start layering some layers. So, all right, we'll see you when I get a batch mixed up and we get some. Uh, get some awesomeness on this guitar and make it all uniform this is the start of how it becomes beautiful all right we'll see you in a little bit hey how's everybody doing got me a fresh batch of wood filler i mixed it with water diluted it and i've got the first layer on the back and sides and it's looking awesome yeah this is always my favorite part of the build because this is the point when it changes uh from being a rough body uh, you know, uh, we cut out from scratch into a more refined 
work of art. So yeah, this is always my favorite. Okay, I'll probably put about five, six coats on the sides and on the back, and then we'll work on the front. And for the most part, I always try to go one direction with one coat, the next direction going the op, you know, crossways, and then so on the next coat. And uh, since how the back was already fairly smooth, I'll probably go five, six layers and more on the front. Try to make this, as always, the best finish possible and the best finish I've done so far. So always trying to perfect that skill. So. All right, hope everybody's having a good middle of the day. Well, it's already 3, 3.20, wow. Time just flies when you're having fun, when you're doing this stuff. It's, uh, it's very rewarding. Uh, I love this part. All right, we'll let this dry. As you can see, it's already starting to dry. This uh, stuff doesn't take that long to dry at all. So, And then when it gets dry, we'll put another layer on, and we'll see in a little bit. Yeah. And see, it's uh, starting to become one uniform color, so it's actually pretty cool. All right, let's see a little bit. All right, how's everybody doing? I've got about three, four coats on the back and sides. I think four coats. Now I'm working on the top, and it's looking good. Ugly phase part two. You can definitely see the predominant. Oh, that is so awesome. Can't wait to see that, the color anodized red oh yeah that's gonna be sweet yeah it's already 6 30 it's starting to get a little dark outside wow it's starting to get dark a little bit earlier and earlier and earlier i guess we're going into fall i guess summer's gonna be over here but okay so let's let this dry for a little while and uh for the, this probably be the last uh update for today and then uh start sanding on it tomorrow but i'll put about three four more coats on here but it's looking good all right i hope everybody has a good night and we will see you tomorrow wow i love that shape that is so cool so cool all right there we go good wednesday morning everybody hope everybody's having a great morning hope you've had your coffee hope everything is going well it is time to continue work on the Serpent Sting number two electric guitar build. It is August 31st here in Central Florida. The sun is out, it feels good. It's probably about 70, 80 degrees. Ah, so it's time to continue work. And as you can see, we I uh, finished the layers of the wood grain filler and it looks pretty killer wanted to show you how it looks uh plan for today is to yeah see how it's textured plan for today is to smooth this to a beautiful perfection put it on a hanger i've got my hanger here i've got my tools and we're gonna go with a can and a half of two in one krylon spray fillable sander and we're gonna make this a beauty and then we're gonna have it on the hanger for a while and we're gonna start the process of making this finish awesome. All right, so let me start sanding on this a little bit and I look forward to making it beautiful and we will see you soon. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, another quick update. We are, the ugly phase has passed and we are sanded and <laughs> looking beautiful. We are ready for some primer coats, but I just wanted to show you how it looks. Freshly sanded. Started off with 320 grit, then I moved up to 1000 grit. And it is looking amazing. I just love this step. This process right here, this step in the process, where it transforms to a rough uh, body, to a finished look, as you can see. Wow. That is just amazing. That's that is just fulfillment. That is just the feeling of just how I can't explain the feeling. Just transforming something that was relatively in rough shape. Really cool nevertheless, but then now it's just into the state it's in. Okay, next step I'm gonna put it on the hanger. And like I said, we're gonna put some two-in-one primer filler on there and put about a can or so on there taking my time possibly sanding in between coats 
and we will see you when I get in the hangar. Okay, we'll see you in a bit. All right, we are ready for primer coats. I have uh, uh, blown this off fairly well and make sure there was no dust or dirt or any kind of debris um, attached to the hanger, of course, obviously. So we are ready for some two-in-one primer coats. I just wanted to show you how it looks prior to the primer coats being sprayed. I'll show you the front and a better light angle. Yeah, that is awesome. All right, fingers crossed. This is gonna be sweet. see you when I get some primer on there. Fingers crossed. This stuff's pretty good stuff so I don't, I don't uh, predict having any issue at all. <laughs> see you in a bit. All right first layers of primer have been applied and it is looking awesome. I do love that product. I swear that is the best product I have used. Look at that. It's just amazing. And that's only a few layers. And I still got probably about another three layers to go on there. Just the primer coats. I mean, it looks pretty good. So that's pretty awesome. All right. And let me uh, put a few more coats on there. And then we'll let this sit for several days. And then we'll put a sand on it. And then we'll get some base coats for it. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, another quick update. I've completed the uh, primer coats and it looks amazing, as always. Uh, that uh, Krylon 2-in-1 is just an amazing product. I mean, look at that. That's just, that's just awesome. It filled in all the little spots. It's a filler primer, so that's its job, but it just does it so well that it's just, it's just amazing. Yeah, especially that look at that that's just perfect that sanding little section on that was just awesome yeah all right we'll let this cure for probably about a week then we'll put some sand on it probably about a thousand grit sandpaper and then we'll go with some base coats whether it be I don't know probably be a red whatever I have on hand red and then once that cures, then we'll sand that, and then we'll actually go with the base color of the anodized red. Because that stuff's kind of expensive, so we'll try to get about two cans and use two cans on this body. And hopefully that'll be enough. And then, of course, the 2K clear coat. And then there's all the work to do on the, uh, the neck and the frets. And all that fret ends, and then paint the headstock, and then figure out where I'm going to put a logo on the headstock. So, But yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, hope everybody's having a good day. And this will conclude the uh, the progress on the Serpent Sting Number Two guitar, <laughs> and it turned out awesome. See, I love that contour. The contour is just it's just awesome. So let's see. Uh, that's just that's just so cool. All right, and we will see you later. Have a good one. And yeah, me again. <laughs> Actually, I just wanted to show you in the light, better light, with the uh, the results of that two-in-one spray max and the sanding and everything like that just wanted to show it to you in a better light yeah wow huh pretty cool it looks great huh that is gratification right there that's that's what you're looking for when it comes to just the primer coats we're not even to the base paint coat or anything yet and it's already looking that smooth and perfect so all right and we will see you soon Okay, actually just one last, I swear, one last update for today. I seen it hanging on the rack and I seen the shadows and I just wanted to share. Wow, that's cool. That is so cool. I love it. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, there we go. Alright. Good morning, everybody. August 4, 2022. Uh, 
Nice overcast day here in Central Florida, and it's time to continue working on the Ninja Warrior number two. Or actually, I'm sorry, the Serpent Sting number two electric guitar. As you recall, before I did the uh, primer coats, and it's looking good. Just wanted to show you that. All right, let me put a 320 grit sand on it. Try to get it as perfect as possible, and then we'll go with some base coats of red. I've got two cans left over from the prior prior build, the Van Halen build, and other builds, I guess. Um, and I'm just going to use that paint just as a base coat because it's going to do the anodized red, so that's going to cover that completely. But I want to get several coats just so I can have it finish really nice and be able to sand the red when it cures and everything. So, all right, so let me put some sand on. I got my tools, got my mask and my blower um get some sand on it and try to get it as smooth as possible then put some base coats of red all right we'll see you in a little bit all right got really good sand 320 grit sandpaper i've uh, been blowing it off and then hopefully i got all the dust off it and uh we're ready for some red base coats and this is just going to be the underlying color and then after i let this cure for about a week i'll sand it and then maybe do it again, and then maybe we'll do the uh, anodized red color. So hopefully this will, it's looking pretty good. It looks pretty flat, but when the color goes on there, we'll be able to see how much more we need to do. But yeah, all right, just wanted to show you before the red starts to appear, and we will see in a little bit. All right, we got the first uh, round of base color red on the guitar body. And like I say, and I sound like a repeated record, this is not going to be the color. It's going to be anodized red, but this is just the underpaint. So when this cures, I can sand it and then prep it for the actual finish coat of anodized red. So I just wanted to show you what it looks like. It looks pretty good. All right. So that's one layer or, you know, that's several coats actually, but uh, first round, next round is going to be some sanding. And then I'll put some more red, and then we will go with the anodized after that. We'll see. And then we'll probably have to sand the anodized, and then more anodized, and then clear coat. So, all right. So I can start working on the neck as far as the frets, but it looks pretty good. Kind of got that devil vibe. <laughs> so, all right. And we will see you shortly. All right. Just a quick uh, final update today on the. Uh, all right just a quick final update on the serpent stink number two guitar for today uh first layer of red base coats have been applied and it's looking bright <laughs> the red that's going to be the final color is going to be a uh, anodized red so it's going to look like chrome it's going to probably not be as bright <laughs> as this red but looks pretty cool yeah like i said after this uh let me see if i take it off the hanger here yeah, as you recall, I just painted this earlier today. It looks pretty good. Uh, you can still see a little texture in the paint. And I'll sand this paint and try to get all that out. And then possibly even add another layer of uh, red to it. Once this cures and I sand it, that way we can try to get it as flat and smooth as perfect as possible prior to the final ba final coats of anodized red go on so it looks pretty cool I'm putting it on a hanger here <laughs> all right yep going pretty smoothly looks cool that's definitely fryer engine red now but it's going to be the opposite of this color which is the anodized blue color like you recall on the Ninja Warrior number two guitar, but it's going to be the flip of it. And it's going to be red. So yeah, it's probably going to be a little bit darker and definitely chrome see-through and then the clear coat over it. So it's going to look pretty awesome. All right. So then we'll start working on the uh, fret work on the neck and then get the, the front of the headstock prepared for the red and all that also. So looks pretty cool. I really dig the shape. So all right. I hope everybody's having a good day and we will see you tomorrow on this guitar or next couple days when this cures and we'll sand it but we'll probably work on the the neck here tomorrow but all right we'll see in a little bit good morning everyone uh september 8th 2022 it's time to continue work on the ninja warrior number two guitar as you see i got my sanding equipment ready 
And I'm ready to sand this uh, base coat of red and make it more flat. As you can see right now, it's a little bit textured. You can definitely see. Uh, it's had time enough to cure. Sand that little section back there, but yeah. Sand it, and this is the process of making the finish as smooth as possible. Sanded it flatter, and then we'll go with 320 grit and 600 grit, and then we'll put another round of paint and see if we can get it even flatter. And then maybe I'll spray some red, of my other can of red on there. Um, we'll blow it off real good, tack cloth it, and uh, all right, let me get that going, and we'll see in a little bit. All right, another quick update. Uh, it's got to finish sanding for like the last couple hours. Here's the aftermath. <laughs> Got a bunch of red on me. <laughs> I just washed my hands so I handled the phone. But uh, yeah, sanded it really well. And it, I used 320 grit up to 1,000 grit. And then I put another coat of red on the body. And this time I was using cherry red. And I think the other one was uh, apple red. So this is just leftover cans from the Eddie Van Halen and whatever. And these are just base coats. And this is... More or less me trying to perfect the craft of making the perfect guitar finish. So this is the second round of red. As you recall, this will be, so what was it? The uh, the wood grain filler, and then I did the uh, the two-in-one Krylon uh, uh, sanding primer, two-in-one, and I sanded that. And then uh, like I just did uh, the red, I coated the red, uh, and then I let it cure for about four or five days. And then now I just finished sanding that really, really, really well. And uh, now I just put a another base coat and it went well, except for little gnat bugs that were kind of just, you know, they, they, they like they like tease you. And same thing with the flies, they, uh, they get to the point where they get like right on your finish and they want to just go on there and land on there and just you know, I don't know what they want to do, have a picnic or something. But yeah, it being bright red like that, then it, but well, I'll go in the house in a second. Let me clean this mess and I'll go in the house and I'll show you how much improved the overall finish. Because you, you can recall uh, earlier video, you could see the texture, you know what I mean? You can see the wood grain texture and the wood underneath and just the layers. I'm starting to see that it, it was quite a bit to do to sand. I mean, you can see all the residue. I mean, I, I've blown it all off, but... Uh, Quite a bit of red and there's a bunch of paper that fell back there but just individually squares i wish i would have filmed it more but i was just in the moment you know and it's doing it and i think uh that's the key to make a superb finish and i kind of did it on accident on the uh ninja warrior number two guitar the uh the anodized blue guitar just for the fact that there was a couple spots that weren't cooperating but luckily this one isn't having any spots and it, there might be a sand or two spec but i'm gonna sand that when it hardens again and then we're going to go with the anodized color. And I got two cans of the anodized color, you know, on purpose. Because uh, I think I used two and a half, almost three cans on the uh, Ninja Warrior 2 guitar. But I was learning the process. So this time I'm using up cans of, you know, less less uh, expensive paints to get the base coats. And then to layer it and sand it. And then every successive layer gets smoother and smoother. And it's looking awesome. Yeah, so... Let me clean up my mess here and then we'll go inside and I'll show you the results on the, the guitar body itself. And then we can start working on the neck for that one and start doing all the fret work. Um, I don't recall if I've done the fret work on that one. I don't think I have. No, it's still in the box, so I haven't done the fret work on that. So we'll do the fret work. And then we could even put anodized uh, coloring. But I might put a base coat of red before the anodized on that guitar, the headstock as well, just to... Just case it changes the color somehow if it doesn't so i'm going to save what's ever left in this can and do a layer on the headstock the front of the headstock that's going to receive the color and that way it'll all be uniform hopefully fingers crossed all right let me clean up and then we'll be right back yeah just me again i'm cleaning up and you know this reminds me of uh anybody ever had those flaming hot cheetos you know where the the flaming hot sauce gets all over your fingers that's kind of like what this is <laughs> anyway, just me being goofy. All right, see you in a bit. All right, inside the house. Let's see if I can show you what I mean as far as the texture. I wonder if I got a really... Let's see, I get really low here. And you see how the texture from the sanding, it looks so much improved. It's kind of hard to see with the gloss of the paint. But the... Let's see... In a little while, I'll uh, actually, uh, up close and personal, huh? <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, 
in a little while here I'll actually uh, take this guitar and take it off the hanger and show you up close but yeah I just wanted to see if you can see the reflection you can see like the dramatically in, improve the flat of the guitar body itself it's uh, the sanding in this coat yeah there's yeah I don't want to it's still fairly wet but let's see if I can go back here if it'll show it a little bit better yeah maybe you can see the angle if you can see how it's dramatically improved the texture to where it looks way even and uniform I mean it just blows me away how that one step has done that because normally like on some of let's see if some of the older guitars that I've done if I have one hanging here you can definitely see the yeah the texture of the body let's see if I could find one yeah even the first serpent sting let's see let's see if I can show this without really taking it off the hanger maybe I can't but uh, you can see like the the finish if you look close and you can see the it's still a little bit textured it's not like completely like on the Ninja Warrior guitars you see how that's just like perfectly smooth and flat it looks like professionally done look like it was buffed on a buffing wheel so same thing with the Ninja Warrior one guitar and the Kelly but these had multiple layers of paint so the the paint itself but that one in particular the anodized color uh, you remember if you go back and watch the videos and you see what it took to produce that guitar then you'll know what I mean but yeah the uh, the uh, texture has improved so much let's see if I can do this without I don't want to bump it yeah can you see that yeah look at that look at the reflection of the light there you see how dramatically improved that is let's see if I can get a better light here yeah see how I mean there's still some in the, in the crevices on the the little hook thing there but yeah, let me put this back on the hanger I don't want to bump it one second kind of straight on this but uh yeah that step uh so uh, this is a learning process for me that step is definitely crucial as far as making the body there we go perfect yeah oh man that's great all right all right like i said uh probably in an hour or so or a little bit later today when it's had time to cure and you know set and everything like that set up you'll see the difference but maybe i can find uh, a photo of how the finish looked up close or you know a little video clip and then try to match up what it looks like now after the second stage of sanding and the second stage of red and like i said i'm sorry i didn't get in between when i sanded it because i did spend like an hour and a half sanding the old red and like <laughs> i cleaned tried to get best off my shorts possible but there was a ton of dust but just spent a lot of time making it as flat as possible but anyway long-winded but just trying to share the process and it's a journey for me so just trying to make the best guitar that I could make and that's what I think we should all strive to do is try to be the best at what to try to do whatever our passion is the best to our abilities and so what I'm trying to do I'm trying to make each finish of each guitar that I produce the best as it can be and like the best you know what I mean I want to top myself every single time that I make a guitar and I just can't wait to see what this color is because it's going to be you know not like I said before in the past video not the color of this cat but more like the color of the the label it's going to be like that rich dark chrome color it's going to be really good and I got two cans of that so worst case scenario I can always sand that layer too and keep coating that like I did to get that finish with the blue. So, all right. So, hope everybody's having a good day, and we will see. All right, me again, real quick. I felt a little adventurous, and I figured I'd take it off the hanger, even though it's wet, and I could potentially do some bad things. But I just wanted to show you the difference. Wow, look at that. See that? How it's dramatically improved the texture. It's it's way flatter than it was before this morning. And you can see underneath, I didn't do so much underneath the uh, the uh, the plate for the neck. And you see how textured that is? And you see how that looks really... Because I didn't do there. Compared to like 
where I spent so much time sanding it before I painted it. Yeah, so you can see see the difference. Yeah, so let's see if I can do the front here. Yeah, yeah, especially in the front. See that? And it's just such a dramatic change. And it looks just, it's just awesome. And that's going to get better and better too because I'm still going to put like probably two or three more coats of the actual base, you know, the color, the anodized chrome color. But yeah, and there's a few pieces of lint that, you know, landed here and there. Minor, minor. And I'm getting really patient with that. In the past, I might have tried to put my finger on it to try to just a microscopic piece of lint and then cause like a big old scar. Like example, like right... Let's see if I can get it to focus on the little tiny piece of lint that fell in the finish. Now it's different. I can't see it. Anyway, so mine are small, but you try to make it a perfect. But yeah, just wanted to show you. See if I can get a landscape view. Wow. It looks per looks like really professionally done, and that's what I'm that's what I'm really shooting for. See the sides? Just wow. All right. So let me hang this back up before I do any harm. So, all right, we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, me again. I, I did find an example, like the Playboy Bunny guitar. I took it off the rack and I did paint the back of the neck on this one. But let me show you the difference in the texture. Let's see if it, you see that? I didn't spend the time. This even has 2K clear coat on it. But I didn't spend the time to go through the paint layers. And you see how textured that is? So... This is definitely a learning process. See, if I would have took the time and sanded it. Well, let me try to turn this around. Uh, it's got a little dust on it, but you can see, especially in the black. See how it's like textured and not perfectly flat like you go for? So that's, I'm learning with the process of that. But all right, play with a guitar. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. It is September 9th, 2022, and it's time to continue work on the Serpent Sting number two guitar. And I got the neck out, and it's time to do the net fret work. So, usual fret work, I got all my usual tools. I got fresh uh, 320 grit sandpaper on my leveling beam. I got my rocker arm, got my all my good tools, my center files, C files. All right, first step as always is going to be to take my Allen key. And my straight edge and make sure the neck is nice and level and perfectly straight and then we'll start taping it up and start working on the frets all right and we'll see in a little bit all right got the fretboard and the neck completely straight and taped up now i'm going to get my sharpie and i'm going to mark off all the frets and i'll be right back all right all the frets are marked now i'm going to level them off uh, to level to each other i've got my I think it's probably eight inch leveling beam I like to use. You could use a bigger one, but I like using this one, smaller one, so it work, work pretty good. And then I got the leveling on the side and then on this surface. So let me gently go across all the frets and then level them real good. Then I'll get my rocker arm out and make sure they're all level to each other. And we'll see you after that steps. All right, got all the frets level to each other and it wasn't so bad. I didn't have to take off too, too much material. They were all pretty much in line. There were no majorly high or low frets. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to remark them and then we're going to put a crown. And as usual, I'm going to use my centered Z file from Stumac and make them nice and rounded or actually put a crown on all the frets and make it really playable awesomely. Awesomely playable, duh. It's early. I had my coffee. Alright, a quick update. I got a beautiful crown on all the frets and it's looking great. Okay, now so now I'm gonna go through the sandpapers and round it off and and make them real shiny. I'm starting with 600. Going this time around, we're gonna go with 600, 800, 1,000, 1,200, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 7,000, and 10,000 grit sandpapers. So. Gonna go through all the sandpapers, start from the left to the right on all of them, and make the, sh the frets nice and rounded and shiny. And we'll see when they get that done. Just wanted to show you. And see, so you always try to put the try to get the leftover mark that's untouched by the crowning file to be the same, pretty much width for all the frets. And that way, this guitar is gonna play awesome. All right, so we'll see you after I do that next step. All right, see you in a little bit. 
like everything cleaned up and looking awesome. Yeah, the frets are looking brilliant and beautiful. All right, so the next step is going to be to address these fret ends. Not that there's major fret sprout. Come on, focus for me. Um, but as you can see, most frets, when they come from the factory, they're just this half oval shape and they've got the sharp jagged edges. So I've got my fret file um, and I'm going to round those over and make it really nice and feel really good. All right, let me accomplish that and we'll see you in a while. All right, all the fret ends have been rounded and they are looking awesome. If you can see if it focuses. Yeah. So all the fret ends feel great. No sharpness at all. It's just awesome. All right, so I guess we'll wait till the weather is a little bit better and then we'll tape this up and we'll put some uh, red paint on the front of the headstock. But other than that, it's looking great. Everything is good to go. All right. And we will see everybody soon. All right. I hope you're having a great day. We'll see you in a little bit. All right. September 9th, still uh, 2022. And the sun came out. So we're going to tape up this neck. And we're going to put some red coat. First, I'm going to take some thousand grit sandpaper I got here. And just uh, kind of rough up the uh, the front of this headstock. That way it'd give the paint something to more adhere to. And then tape it up real good. And then put some red color on the front. And prepare it for the anodized color. Alright, we'll see you in a little bit. Uh, I got the neck and headstock taped up. And I love this unique shape. And I made sure to take full advantage of the contour. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, and get some paint and go outside. And I won't take the phone outside because it's, it's damp and I want to concentrate. Put some color on here and I'll be right back and I'll show you the end results. Fingers crossed. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, successful coat of red base coat. And of course, you know, I'm going to put the, uh, the end of that red. This is just to match that color. That way when I apply the red... It's all uniform and the same color, more or less. All right, so we let this flash, and then we'll take off the tape, and I'll be right back. It looks pretty cool. All right, we'll see you in a sec. All right, very cool. Took off the tape. Just, uh, I'll leave the, the white uh, paper towel on the neck because I still got to go with the anodized color and the 2K and my logo and all that good stuff, but I just wanted to show you. looks pretty cool. I love that shape. Let's see. They're both that red, bright, fiery red color, so that's pretty cool. All right, and we'll let this uh, cure for a day or so more. Letting the body cure, and then we'll put another sand on the body if needed. Yeah, I'll probably put another fine sand, thousand grit, and then start with the anodized red color. So we're getting there. Slow process, but it's going to be... The end result is just going to be so awesome. So, all right. That'll conclude today's progress on the uh, Serpent Sting number two guitar, duh. Sometimes I get brain freeze and I'm trying to name everything. So, and I like that cool, that uh, the truss rod, how it has that little red opening. But, all right. So, we'll see you in a bit. Cool. Good morning everybody. It is September 13, 2022. And it's time to put a logo on the ninja, not the one ninja, the Serpent Sting number no. two electric guitar. As you recall last video, we saved the paint from the abyss yet again. And it's dried and it looks pretty good. And when I put a clear coat over that, it's gonna look awesome. But we're gonna put a logo. And I've decided probably on the chrome one, I've got some choices. I could do white do chrome I could do my old style logo so I've got a couple extra bits and I would just use the ragland part but let's see I think the the chrome one would actually work pretty good but I might have to do the individual letters to accommodate for the space but we'll see all right we'll see in a little bit let me see what I can figure out all right successful logo install looks pretty good I could go with the uh, yeah, a little registered trademark symbol on there, but I think this should be good enough. 
and they could break out the crit machine and try to, you know, maneuver a small enough one. You know what, I might just, just, just because. Okay, we'll send a little bit, let me figure that out. Alright, it is complete. The logo on the Serpent Sting number two electric guitar is finished. Woo! That was small, <laughs> so <laughs> little bits. So, alright. Now we just gotta wait for a little while and then we'll put some 2K over this in the body and we should be good for a go. Alright, we'll see you in a little bit. Hey, how's everybody doing? Alright, it is Monday and I just wanted to give a quick, uh, quick update on the Serpent Sting number two guitar. I finally got the logo the way I like it. This has actually been redone since last time we seen it and I've got a clear coat over that. And then I did 2K clear coat on the body yesterday and it turned out absolutely amazing. Yeah, I just wanted to show you real quick. So we're gonna let this cure until Friday. And then on Friday we'll be assembling this guitar can't wait for that the guitar 2k made the guitar body look amazing if you can recall I was gonna go with the uh, go with the um, red chrome colored paint but I had a major reaction on the headstock and I'm glad I didn't do anything for the body because the red underneath the 2k clear coat turned out so well that uh, I didn't want to risk it so yeah, just a quick uh, update, but alrighty, and we will see everybody soon to complete this guitar. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to see if I can try to lift it up, but I don't want to risk uh, bumping it. <laughs> so, I'm just going to take it off the hanger and show you. But wow, look at that. It's just awesome. Yeah, I'm glad the headstock finally worked out because, uh, wow, it was... Uh, this is like the third, fourth rendition where I had to strip the paint off, start over, strip the paint off, start over. I was kind of like that on the orange one. So, and I'm letting the devil horns hand cure for a couple more days before I do full photo shoot. Because it seemed a little, just a little, the paint just seemed a little tacky. And I didn't want to mess with it any further, but alright. And we'll be working on that. And then we got other things in the works I can't wait to share with you. But I hope everyone's having a good day and we'll see you soon. Good morning. How's everybody doing on this fine Friday? It is Friday, September 23rd, 2022. And it is time. It is time to assemble the Serpent Sting number no. two guitar. And I just wanted to show you that on the carts. I wanted to show you the 2K clear coat, how it turned out. It just turned out amazing. Let's see if I can do this. I just wanted to show you how well, wow, look at that. That is just amazing, look at that. That turned out really good. Wow, that finish is just, it's getting better. And I'm working at it. I'm trying to perfect the art of the perfect finish. But yeah, look at that, that's just amazing. Let me get some better reflections of the finish itself yeah that is just so cool all right and as usual the first step is going to be first to set the guitar back down without dinging it um and then work on the bridge first all right i'll be right back all right first step is going to be to install the bridge posts so i'll knock that out and then i will be right back all right we'll see you in a sec Install the bridge post. This is always kind of a stressful part because you just never know if the paint's gonna do something funky or whatever. But yeah, they're installed, so it looks pretty good. All right, next step is going to be to uh, gently put the bridge in there with a little bit of string or a little bit of tension on the springs, just a little bit. So let me flip it over. <laughs> Fingers crossed. All right, this finish just looks so good. It just makes me a little bit nervous to. <laughs> I heard it at all. All right, we'll see a little bit. All right, got the spring set in, looking pretty good. And I got the ground wire uh, soldered on and fed through the front. So now let me flip it over and look and see how everything is going. And then we're going to work on the pickup. All right, we'll see a little bit. 
All right, I got the pickup mounted. And since how there was not much room for adjustment, this pickup seemed like it was a little bit fatter than the hole, but I got it in there, thank God. I had to get a file and kind of shave the metal on there, but finally got it in there, so we're good. So there's not gonna be any adjustment on there, so hopefully all my measurements are good. Um, so I'm go ahead, I went ahead and mounted all four screws. So, all right, so next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna solder a couple wires to the input jack and then we're going to install the input jack real quick. All right, we'll see in a little bit. All right, got the input jack installed. Now it's time to get the pedometer, push-pull plot, and everything together and start the wiring process. So, let's see, I've got to make a little headway with that, yeah. All right, we'll see in a little bit. All right, got the uh, bridge temporarily <laughs> placed there. Got a little protecting, little protecting foam. Hopefully it doesn't stick to the finish. Fingers crossed. Uh, Alright, so I got my pickup uh, and the pickup ring all good to go. So what I'll do is I'll feed it through and then temporarily mount a screw. And then we're going to have, you know, so that way later on we can readjust and feed through the uh, ground wire. And I'll do all that. Alright, got everything wired up perfectly. And diagrams are online for this. Uh, the pull, when, you, when the pot is pulled out, it's the front part of the coil, and when it's pushed in, it's the whole coil, the, the both coils, both humbucker, you know, the humbucker. All right, we'll see in a little bit. Let me put this pedometers in. <laughs> Fingers crossed, it's kind of tricky. All right, we are full on wired. Whew, that was kind of tricky, but got it done. Push pull installed. All right, so here's the here's the fun part. Okay, we're gonna do a full test. <laughs> okay, we got signal. We start with the volume all the way down, tone all the way up. So we do this one hand this time. Nope, I gotta put it down one sec. Alright. Fingers crossed on this one. Who please let it just be good. Please, 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 please to the God heavens above. Alright, we shouldn't get anything. Okay, nothing. Turn the volume all the way up. Come on, give me some. Alright. Let me see, pull it out. Yep, top half is active, bottom half is not. Push it in. Yep, bottom half, top half. See the tone changes. <laughs> yep, definitely changes. All right, we have successfully wired. Whew. Oh man, that was uh, stressful. All right, so let's uh, let's put the back cover. Um, the back access panel plate on and I'll be right back. Uh, I got my back panel plate. Uh, I just wanted to show you I put the tone and the volume knob on and it's pretty cool. Yeah, it looks awesome. Alright, <laughs> we'll see you in a sec. Alright, back cover plate's installed and it's looking awesome. Woo, uneventful so far. Everything's going smooth and according to plan. Okay, so let me go hang this back up on the uh, the rack there and then we'll start working on the neck get the neck all squared away and let me clean out my mess of the non-essentials and uh, we'll see in a little bit <laughs> fingers crossed all right clean up my mess got only the essentials out it's time to install the tuning keys and the string trees on the neck and then we'll get the neck and the body together all right we're getting close all right we'll see in a bit all right successful turning keys and string trees installed and it looks pretty awesome all right as tradition set this here time to get the body out and time to ooh, get these two together let's see how it goes all right ooh, it's like i always say this is always the stressful part and the most uh that's where all the measurements and all the planning pays off we'll see how it goes all right it's time after many hours of preparation it is time to put together the neck to the body oh fingers crossed that this goes well and uneventful oh please 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 to the god of guitar building please let it go all right we'll see you in a little while all right we have successful connection to the body to the neck and it looks amazing as always i just always love this part oh wow that just looks so killer Ooh, that's a bit stressful. And, you know, when you're dealing with stuff like that, just any little thing, you know, you can, a screwdriver can slip out of your hand, which it has, 
and just completely scar the finish but yeah all right so the next step is to uh, put some strings on here and get it rolling and hopefully the neck pockets uh, hopefully everything goes well all right we'll see in a little bit all right another quick update uh serpent sting number two is born oh man it sounds amazing this, these pickups are just just awesome and i got it dialed in i got it intonated uh, i'm going to give it a little while to let the, the neck settle because normally the neck settles does what it needs to do um so i got the strings on like i said i got it all intonated and it, it i'll do a full sound demo and how it sounds it's just it's just awesome it hangs really perfectly I ha i've got the strap buttons on so next thing I do is turn it over and install the neck plate and I've got it pretty much dialed in to where I want it as far as the pitch of the bridge. It's straight up level right now but I might add just a little bit of more tension that way because when I put the plate back on I don't like to generally take it back off unless it's absolutely necessary. So let me flip it over and we'll do that and I'll be right back. Alright, got all the back plates installed and they are looking awesome. A few fingerprints but in general it's it went well it went well the installation of everything is cool all right so let me go put this on the, the hanger for a little while finish cleaning up all the rest of my mess and then in a little while we'll get it dialed in and I'll have to cut the uh, cut the nut make sure that the nut slots are nice and perfect where they need to be it's always a plus on that end because you can get it really low on the other end but then if it's high on the other end still play like you want to try to make it as play as perfect as possible so all right and this will conclude the progress on the serpent sting number two guitar and i'll go hang it up and then i'll show you but i will see you in a little bit all right just the final update today on the serpent sting number two guitar right behind the serpent sting number one guitar so yeah all right and we'll let this uh let it settle for a bit it's pretty cool and i like the fact that uh i got the neck pocket kind of deep like that it's awesome yeah it's pretty cool so uh we'll let this settle and then i'll do all the fine tunings and then i'll cut the slots and the knot perfectly and get it wire, you know, working and playing and intonated and everything. So, and then I'll do a full photo shoot and sound test and hope everybody's having a great day. The Ninja Warrior number three is curing. I'll let that cure another day or so. And then we'll sand on that. And then we can start working on the uh, Ninja Warrior number four and number five. And then I've got some, some other really exciting news and exciting guitars that I'll be building here soon. So, all right, and we will talk to everybody in a little bit. Oh yeah, Michael Batio brought it from the had it up there, but uh, it was a little too the, the headstock's a little pointy. But uh, yeah, I love that guitar when they made that guitar. Uh, Michael Batio, the Rocket. That's uh, my version of it, homemade guitar. But anyway, all right, and we will talk to everybody soon. See you soon.